on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. The Brave Browser intends to create a new Ethereum-based token that rewards you for turning on ads. Dash Detailed is a weekly YouTube show about the privacy-focused digital currency known as Dash. It is hosted by the lovely Amanda B. Johnson and keeps you right up to date about all the exciting developments in the Dash ecosystem. Click the link in the video description and subscribe today. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. Today is the 24th of March, 2017. I have a couple of announcements today, and then we'll get right into the main show. Announcement number one is a reminder, really. The live stream is on Sunday. It's number two call-in show, where you can just call in via Skype, and then ask me a question on the air, and I will answer it as best I can. So it's going to be on Sunday, the 26th of March, and it's going to be at 2 p.m. GMT. Remember to check the British clocks are changing, so when you convert the time zone, factor that in. Now, the second announcement relates to the show as a whole. I know many of you like The Daily Show. I also know that many of you like the blend of, say, price movements and commentary, and then the news. And this is largely why the channel has built to 8,000 subscribers. However, I can't allow the numbers to become my master. And by that I mean I've gotten to the point again where I'm running myself ragged, and that's a sign that something needs to change. Now, if I don't maintain my own well-being, my capacity to produce the content for you just won't be there. And yesterday's episode was a prime example of that. You know, my success is built largely off of my ability to articulate. And I think I did a poor job of that in yesterday's episode. And I'm not prepared to sacrifice quality for quantity, which is what I believed happened yesterday. So there are two ways I can go with this. One would be to switch to a one show per week format, which would be like a live stream once a week, giving a roundup of the biggest stories of the week. It would be the same amount of content, about an hour of news and commentary, but it would be sort of four or five news stories compacted into a single one hour show, probably on a Friday. And then I'd also put out maybe a one interview a week as a bonus. So that whole thing would be option one. Option two is to scale back the length of the daily show. That would mean cutting this segment where I give my comments on the Bitcoin price chart that would leave the show with two segments, the market roundup and then the news and commentary segment. I think this is probably better because it's less of a dramatic change for you, but it'll also lighten the load for me, at least enough for me to keep the daily show coming out. Now, this is an announcement of a decision I've made on my own. I don't like to do that. I'd prefer to share what I'm thinking while I'm thinking it and then get everyone's comments. You are the viewers after all, so I'd be a fool not to invite your input. So please let me know in the comments below what you think. So now let's move on to the market roundup courtesy of coinmarketcap.com. First thing to note today is Bitcoin's share of the world cryptocurrency volume, or actually the market cap rather, has slipped to a new all-time low of 69.5%. So out of the whole market cap of whatever it is, $23.5 billion dollars, that is the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin now only has a 69.5% share of that. That's still quite large, but it's the lowest it's ever been, essentially the lowest that I've ever seen it. Now, this is largely due to the decrease in the Bitcoin price itself. You know, last week we saw a great increase in the market cap of Ethereum, which obviously closed the gap, but now Bitcoin is going the other way and its market cap is dropping and therefore, that's where the market share is going. Now, Bitcoin is back around the $1,000 mark, which we'll look at in the next segment when we look at the price chart. Ripple is actually up 23%, but I'm going to ignore that. And instead, I'm going to go right down to the bottom of the top 20 here. 
to go down to Factum and Decred, both of which are up 10% today. Factum is now at $3.78. Decred is now at $7.56. And in between those two is the biggest winner of the day, and it's Dogecoin up 21%. Now, not surprisingly, PIVX is today's biggest loser with a price correction of 33.7% to the downside. Yesterday, a PIVX token was worth about 95 cents, and today it's closer to 64 cents. Still a large gain over the last seven days, though, so nothing to sniff at. Now, I'm working on having someone from the PIVX project come and talk to us so we can get our head around it, so stay tuned for that. And thank you to everyone who tweeted at them yesterday with encouragement for them to come on the show. If you haven't done that yet and would like PIVX on the show, please tweet at them and let them know. And now we turn to Bitcoin wisdom for the Bitcoin price chart. Now I'm still focusing my attention on that $1,000 mark. Like I said yesterday, other than the 24 hour visit below that point, we've held pretty well above it ever since. Even today's low touched $992, but that didn't even last long. Right now, as I speak, it's $999. Now, the three green candles here that appeared after the big dip, those three big days where the price went down, this pattern is like a half of a what's called a dead cat bounce. It's not technically a dead cat bounce yet until it breaks the previous low, which is about 994. Now, a dead cat bounce is basically where we have a big price crash. People think it's hit the bottom and then they start buying in as the price goes up. And that would be those three green candles that you see after the major crash. But then the price resumes its downward move and goes even lower than the previous low. That's a dead cat bounce. You know, people think the price has hit the floor, but then the cat bounces off the ledge and falls even further. And of course, when those new investors see the price falling even further in the second half of the dead cat bounce, they have a significant incentive to cut their losses, which only adds to the new downward momentum. For the time being though, that $1,000 mark is providing support and preventing it from becoming a full dead cap bounce. So in terms of the news then, I've turned to bitcoinist.com for this article called Brave Browser Creates Ad Platform Using New Ethereum Token. Now I'm so sorry, I did not do the full sweep of the news headlines today. As soon as I came across this announcement, I just knew I had to cover it. Now, coming from a marketing background, ever since the Brave browser launched, I've been a big, big fan of their approach to transforming online advertising. I did a show a while back talking about AdsCoin, and it wasn't that long ago when I read their white paper. Now, at the time when I did that show, I stated plainly that what AdsCoin was attempting to do just wasn't going to work. The basis of my claim that the ads coin model wasn't going to work was that it required the consumer to change their behavior by going to this special product search engine whenever they wanted to buy a product or a service. And that was necessary because the product sales were where the ad revenue was gonna come from. Now I'll never claim to know everything. In a worldly sense, I know very, very little indeed. But the subjects I do know about, I know about. And when I saw the ads coin model, my decade of marketing experience manifested itself as a voice inside that just went, nope, that's not going to work. Now the trouble is, because that short statement of, nope, that's not going to work, is based on 10 years of actual life experience, my answer to the question, well, why isn't it going to work? It would just take me far too long to explain. The short answer is that it requires people to change their behavior and that is very unlikely to happen. This stands in stark contrast to Brave's approach. And I, I had the opposite experience when I came across Brave. And I came across Brave long before I came across AdsCoin. Now Brave started with this promise of having an ad blocker built right into their web browser, which is first and foremost working with existing user behavior. Then they proposed to give you the option to enable ads in exchange for receiving some of the advertising revenue. And to me, that is the answer. To me, that's the real win-win for both the content producer's point of view, the advertiser's point of view, and the user's point of view. And Brave simply creates a platform and then allows the users to set their own preferences. 
To me, that's wisdom, and that's why this is going to work. Now, originally Brave, like at the very beginning, they were going to pay users in Bitcoin for turning on the ads. And that's the feature that many of us have been waiting for since the very first version of Brave was released. This announcement here is exciting because it's a step closer to this becoming a reality. So let's have a look at it. Let me begin here with the red bit as always. It says the Brave internet browser has changed the way people around the world use the internet by making browsing safer and faster in addition to integrating Bitcoin's peer-to-peer -peer value to many new users and wallets. Now the current version of the Brave browser has a built-in Bitcoin wallet. You fund the wallet, Brave keeps track of the sites that you visit, and then it distributes the Bitcoin in your wallet to the various content creators. Now that's an auto donation model, but it's not the thing that got me and many other people most excited about Brave. It was the idea of paying users to view the ads. So let's move on to the orange bit here. It says that Brave is very focused on improving the online experience. And this new token-based system called BAT, B-A-T, Basic Attention Token, has multiple benefits for users, advertisers, and online publishers. One of the big objections to online ads is privacy. And one of the goals of this BAT token is to continue using ads to fund publishers without compromising privacy. And they're going to accomplish this by creating this BAT token on Ethereum. Sounds ideal. And the biggest benefit to using Ethereum over Bitcoin in this particular use case is that they can make the BAT token into smart coins that behave how they want them to behave, rather than having to make do with the standard functionality of Bitcoin. Now they could still use Bitcoin, but that might mean that a lot of the code required to track and then manage payments would have to run on a regular centralized server. I'd rather them use Ethereum and build it into the blockchain as a smart contract if I had to have the choice. I think the value of running the system entirely on a public blockchain like Ethereum is the most important thing. And I don't think Bitcoin is flexible enough to do what Brave wants to do, at least not do it on chain. So then moving on to the yellow bit, which is further down here, it says users will opt in to receive advertising. If they do, their attention will be privately monitored on the device in the Brave browser without tracking. Publishers will be rewarded accordingly with BATS, which are tokens of exchange in a secure, private and anonymous advertising system based on the browser and the mobile app WebView. Users will also get a share of BATS for participating. BAT keeps the data on the device, encrypts the data, and shields the identity of Brave's users. This is what I was getting at. In order to automate this whole process on the blockchain, Ethereum is the obvious choice. The tracking is then limited to the device that you are using. Everything stays within the Brave app, and it doesn't require that data to be transmitted. The only thing that needs to be transmitted is how many BAT tokens you're owed. The article continues here by saying, the BAT token helps serve each user in the model in different ways. For the online user, they get enhanced privacy and security when introduced to an ad. The ads are more relevant and they get BAT tokens. Advertisers get more targeted ads, higher revenue, and less fraud in the ad system. And then online publishers enjoy less expensive customer attention, less fraud, and better attribution. I'm telling you, this is the one. To me, this is the holy grail of online advertising, precisely because it doesn't attempt to change the whole paradigm around how content is consumed and how it's funded with advertising. Adscoin was attempting to change the whole paradigm. Brave are just going to offer a better and fairer way to administer the existing model and allow each stakeholder to personalize the settings to fit their unique preferences. This really can offer each stakeholder with the ideal scenario without anyone having to compromise. In fact, this diagram here shows just how elegant Brave's solution is. The money comes from the advertisers and then it's split between the user and the publisher. 
the user gets compensated for being exposed to the ad, and then the publisher gets compensated for displaying the ad. The advertiser themselves is then only getting exposure to people who have opted in to see the ads. How does it get any better than that? One of the big objections to online advertising is that it is intrusive, whereas this gives the user the option to turn the ads off completely or turn them on and get paid for it. And if that wasn't enough, the user's privacy is protected from both the advertiser and the publisher. The ads are then going to run on the basis of how relevant they are to the content that is published, rather than on personally identifiable information such as age, gender, etc. And I'm very happy with that model, even as an advertiser. And just to put a cherry on top, finishing off with the blue bit here, it says, Brave will be offering a bat crowd sale in the near future, and will have a scheduled rollout of the new platform in three phases throughout 2017. That's a drop the mic moment right there. I mean, I'm already 75% of the way to contributing to their ICO before it's even launched. The other 25% is reserved for the details of the crowdfund when they're released. You know, as excited as I am about this, I have to have checks and balances before putting my money into anything. But I'm definitely going to read their white paper and I'm definitely going to go to the dedicated BAT website to sign up for notifications. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From just a few dollars a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. That is all for today, guys. I'll be back on Monday with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.